Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Today in African History with Baba Shaka. I'm Baba Shaka and today is March 1st, 2021. It is also the first day of Women's History Month. So this month we are, inshallah, going to focus on women who have made lasting impressions on our history, both big and small. But before we move forward, I would like to encourage you to give us your support by becoming subscribers to this channel. That will help us out a great deal, right? So today, let's examine the brief friendship of Malcolm X and Yuri Kochiyama, which began 58 years ago with a handshake. Kochiyama and her eldest son, 16-year-old Billy, were arrested along with hundreds of other people, mainly Africans in America, during a protest in Brooklyn, New York in October 1963. They were in this packed courthouse, according to Diane Fujimo, Fujino in her autobiography, Heartbeat of Struggle, The Revolutionary Life of Yuri Kochiyama. There were lots of activists who were waiting the hearing on the civil disobedience charges, and in walks Malcolm X, who was quickly mobbed by adoring activists. Kochiyama described the scene in Democracy Now! interview in 2008, when she said, quote, I felt so bad that I wasn't black, that this should just be a black thing, she recalled. But the more I see them all so happily shaking his hands, and Malcolm so happy, I said, gosh darn it, I'm going to meet him somehow. <laughs> Eventually, Kochiyama called out to Malcolm X. Can I shake your hand? What for, he demanded. To congratulate you for giving direction to your people, she finally mustered. Malcolm X smiled and extended his hand. Kochiyama remembered how she could hardly believe that she was meeting the most prominent black nationalist leader of the time. Kochiyama's friendship with Malcolm X fascinated playwright Tim Toyama, who wrote a one-act play called Yuri and Malcolm X. Malcolm X's movement was probably the last thing you would imagine a Japanese-American person, especially a woman, to be involved with, he says. Toyama's father and Kochiyama's father were cousins and Nisai, which means children of Japanese immigrants. They were part of a generation that was rounded up by the American government and forced to live behind barbed wire during World War II. Yes, America had its own concentration camps during World War II. There's a Japanese saying that the, a nail that sticks out gets hammered down, Toyama explains. I think most Japanese Americans, especially in this side, did not want to stick out, especially after the war. Kochi, Kochiyama couldn't help but stick out. She lived in the New York City housing projects among Africans and Puerto Rican neighbors. Kochiyama began participating in sittings and inviting freedom writers to speak at weekly open houses at her family's apartment. Audi Kochiyama Holman, Yuri's eldest daughter, remember feeling shy around the constant flow of visitors to their home where her mother taped newspaper clippings to the walls and dinner plates often shared space on the kitchen table with piles of leaflets. Our house felt like it was the movement 24-7, Kochiyama Holman recalls. In the summer of 1963, a Kochiyama family vacation included a visit to Birmingham, Alabama to see charred houses and storefronts left behind by racial protests. The Kochiyamas also visited the 16th Street Baptist Church weeks before a bombing there killed four little black girls. It was one of the first news stories in the civil rights movement that our mother sat us down to talk about, Kochiyama Holman recalls. The growing momentum of the civil rights movement and meeting Malcolm X in 1963 radicalized Kochiyama, who became more interested in black nationalism. FBI files later describe her as a, quote, ringleader of black nationalists and a Chinese, a red Chinese agent. Really? Kochiyama and Malcolm X stayed in touch through postcards and even a visit to the Kochiyama's apartment. Their last meeting was on February 21st, 1965, just 16 months after their first handshake in New York City's Audubon Ballroom. That Sunday afternoon, gunmen killed Malcolm X moments after he approached the podium to address a weekly meeting of the Organization of Afro-American Unity, or OAAU, which Malcolm founded after his separation from the Nation of Islam. Most of the audience in the ballroom fell to the ground after the gunfire, crawling away for safety. But Kochiyama headed towards the injured Malcolm X, who was lying on the floor on the stage. 
I just picked up his head and put it in my lap, Coach Yama said in the Democracy Now! interview. I said, please Malcolm, please Malcolm, stay alive. The moment was captured in a photo in Life magazine in 1965. She's the unidentified Asian woman peering worriedly through her horn-rimmed glasses at the soon-to-be lifeless body of Malcolm X. His blood-soaked shirt is open, exposing his bullet-riddled body. But for decades after her brief friendship with Malcolm X, Kochiyama remained committed to causes in the Black, Latino, and Asian American communities. In 1988, she and other Japanese American internees, including her late husband Bill, celebrated the signing of the Civil Liberties Act. It was a formal government apology that provided reparations to World War II internees and a milestone Kochiyama helped to achieve. She then plunged headfirst into the move for reparations for Africans in America due to the slavery issue. In 2014, Yuri Kochiyama died of natural causes in Berkeley, California. The 93-year-old activist died peacefully in her sleep. Now this presentation is much too short to fully capture the life experiences and contributions of Yuri Kochiyama. So I encourage you to take a closer look at this fascinating woman. Please do. I would like to give a special shout out to my niece Dakota Marley Evans who just turned 13 years old. Marley is a beautiful intelligent young lady who I call old lady because of her I've been here before demeanor. Hmm. Happy birthday Marley and thanks for the cupcakes. They were mighty delicious. So until tomorrow inshallah this is Baba Shaka with Today in African History. Masala. Amen.